Finally, to conclude this video series, in the spirit of the mass advanced video series, I'll now talk about the volume between two curves problem, and that's going to be for MX1 only. And here I'll consider a more fancier example where I have y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x, which I will label for your convenience. And what I want to do is take this region that I have now shaded and rotate that about the x-axis to form a solid. And then I want to compute the volume of that solid. So just in a similar manner, I'll have to figure out this point of intersection because I don't know what my upper boundary is. To do that, I'll look towards simultaneous equations, which I've done so here for you. It turns out that it'll be at x equals pi on 4, so that's going to be pi on 4 here. And then I can pretty much now start writing out my integral for the volume. Now, first things first, remember to put a pi in front. That is a mark you definitely do not want to lose on the day. And then we do have a similar problem of an upper curve and a lower curve, and I made it clear enough, hopefully, that the upper curve is cos of x and the lower curve is sine of x. But what I'm actually integrating is going to be the square of the cos of x minus the square of sine of x. So I'll be putting squares on the two expressions before I put the minus in there. And then I obtain the expression that I'm trying to integrate. Now, if you're having a panic attack in an exam and you forget what to do, remember you do have formulas to integrate cos squared of x and sine squared of x respectively. I'll just remark that for cos squared of x, you can jump to writing this without any further proof. But this particular example has been read to be a bit nicer. I know this is actually cos 2x straight away. So pretty much I can then jump straight into doing my integral. And it turns out that that will evaluate to pi and my units for the volume will be units cubed instead. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So just basically don't forget the variations compared to the typical two unit problem. And that's pretty much all you need for these type of problems. Thanks for watching this video series, everyone, and best of luck in your extension study.